So, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Second Glory Hammer album came out end of September. Yeah. Good God, it's already a month ago. <laughs> it is, isn't yeah. it? Wow, hold on. Yeah. Um, Space 1992, Rise of the Chaos Wizards. The, the Why 1992? Well, you know, we wanted to think of some year that was really futuristic, and you know, we didn't want to go too far in the future, so we thought 1992s. You know, a reasonable distance in the future, but not so much that it's ridiculous. Because we don't, we don't want to be a ridiculous band. Oh no, yeah, for perish for thought, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, you wouldn't want to be the sort of band that includes cliches in your music or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's never what we do. Everything we do is um, straight from the heart. <laughs> yeah. And obviously it's set in space. The last song on the first album, or the bonus track, wasn't it? Uh, Wizards. Yeah, obviously led the story into space. Yeah, it was sort of a hinting there would be some sort of intergalactic stuff going on. Yeah. So had you actually planned out the story at that point, or was it just a vague, oh, well, let's do something in space for the next yeah, one? Yeah, I think we'd come up with, all we'd come up with was space 1992, just we had those those two words, and that was all we had, like, you know, when we were still writing the first album, like, let's call the second one space 1992. And then, so we thought, we should sort of uh, hint at this futuristic stuff. Um... Yeah, so it was, it was always going to happen. Yeah, and oh, it's, a, it's a great album. Um, some interesting bits are, and obviously Hollywood Hootsman's a really good sort of catchy. It's pretty good yeah. catchy one. Universe on Fire is sort of bit disco or bit Dragon Force. Yeah, yeah I, I was basically with that one, we're just trying to work out what could we get away with. You know, <laughs> a lot of the time we've stuck to um, a lot of the traditional tropes of power metal and stuff. But I thought, you know what, I want to make a disco song. What could be more 90s than some, you know, Eurobeat sort of tune? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we pulled it off. Yeah, and it, yeah, and it's sort of, listening to the album, it's like, what? Yeah, but it, it works, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things, I suppose, it's a, it's a gamble when you try it, but if it works, that's what matters, yeah. And um, it's a very story driven sort of album. Yeah, so yeah that's with the last one. The whole band is, yeah. the whole concept of the band is just this ridiculous story. You know? Yeah. And do you find it easier or harder writing this sort of story or concept album kind of thing rather than individual songs? Yeah, it's it's good because, you know, like you know, when I'm writing stuff for Ailstorm, all I know is, okay, every song's going to be about pirates and, like, where'd you go from there? You know? Whereas with this, you know, sure, every song's on the same theme, but, you know, there's a very particular thing that's about particular events and stuff. So it's once, once you know what the song exactly has to be about, it's very easy to write a song around that sort of idea. Yeah, and yeah, because I mean, you look at the lyrics, and some of them it's pretty much it's more more like a book, mm. yeah, rather than being, yeah, here's a here's a short, short chorus, yeah, here's a verse, here's a chorus, yeah, it's it is much more of a story. Quick, quick interview, is that right? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah it's um, there's even there's even even whole sections of lyrics that are not even. In the lyrics, in the in the songs, they're just in the lyric books alone, just to flesh out the story. Yeah, so, yeah. so we, we we take it a long way. Yeah, and that sort of attention to detail, that I think a lot of bands would miss. You know, the idea of putting it in the in the in the lyric book because these days, so people download, they don't even read the lyric exactly. book all the time. There's, there's, there's a lot of stuff people miss. You know, it's, this is a very, I know on the surface it's a very stupid album, but if you if you really you know pay attention to the details, there's a lot of stuff going on, like a lot of ridiculous, you know, overcomposed little Easter eggs and details and stuff. Yeah, and that, that's something I noticed. It, <coughs> there's a lot of little details in there, and it's you can listen to it again and again, and you always notice. You know, well, I noticed that a little bit before. Yeah, mm. yeah, um, and obviously there was the box set came with it, yeah, which was a very impressive little very piece of neon work. purple one. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah pinky purple sort of box, yeah. Yeah, when when the record label asked, oh, so we want to do this kind of crazy box set, you, usually they do it with the brown box with some sort of gold thing on it. We were like, could the box be purple? And can the, the, the writing be vomit green? And they were like, <laughs> we'll see. And it's turned out they could be. <laughs> yeah, it's, I really like that box. It's, it's, it's my favourite um, special edition I've ever done. So it's, uh, right, it's, yeah. it's, it's nice, a nice weighty package. Yeah, I think for the next Ailstorm one, you need to get the little bottle of rum in there with it, yeah. <laughs> I kind of wish we'd done a box, you know, like Ale Store treasure chests. You know, oh, like, just, I mean, yeah. The whole thing writes itself, you know. Oh, it does, yes, But um, yeah. I guess next time round that'll happen. I don't think they existed when we did our last albums. So. Right, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's just sort of a nice sort of extra option for some of the fans as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's only two years since the first one, 
and in that time you've so you've written the, the album and you've written a Nailstorm and released it. So been, been a busy boy, haven't I? You certainly have, yeah. I might give it a, a little rest for a while there. I don't know. <laughs> so no plans to release a Nailstorm album next year then? I mean, I might start writing one, but... <laughs> call it 2017, I don't know. Unless you get bored, in which oh case it will be. <laughs> I get very bored. <laughs> Saying that the album come out next week now. <laughs> And have you got any other sort of your little side projects you work on at the minute? I keep having these ideas, and I keep having to stop myself. Like, no, nope, I've got enough. I'm busy enough as it is. You know, like I'm going straight from this tour straight to another tour with Ailstorm in Australia. Then, then we get back from that, I've got another gig. So, it's um, I think I've given myself a bit too much to do. So, I'm, I'm quite happy just to sit back for a bit now. Right. Yeah. So no more Bummelingus shows or anything? Bummelingus is, uh, has had its day, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> that was certainly an, an interesting uh, one. You had the, the Bilston gig on the last tour. <laughs> so, we, we planned on doing more after that, but it never happened. Right, yeah. We, we all got very lazy. And obviously you're on tour at the moment with Stratovarius. You've been going for about three weeks, I think, now. Oh, at least. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We started on... We're going since the 2nd of October. That's right, so it's about a month now then. Yeah. Yeah. How's the tour been going for the band? It's been really good. I'm surprised we haven't died. You know, <laughs> this is the first time Glory Hammer's done a tour this long. And I had these visions of all, it was all catching the flu after 10 days and you know, nightmare situations, cancelled shows, exploding buses. But well, we've made it this far. We're, what, this is the home stretch now? Only only nine shows after this. How about that? <laughs> Is that all? Yeah. Nine, yeah. Whew, yeah. And how has it been going down with the fans? Because obviously with the support slot, you're never quite sure how many people are there to see you. And yeah, you know. it's um, it's great. You know, there's been some shows like we did a lot of shows in Spain that we never played before, and they were big shows, and we were playing to people we never played before, and that's great. And then yeah. you know, convert some new fans. And then there's times we've done like shows in like Germany and so and so where we've played before and everyone's singing along and that's also great so it's you know we've either been you know boosting ourselves in places we've played or finding yeah. new places to play so it's really everything's gone really well for us must be a really great feeling when the crowd are actually singing your yeah, own songs back it's, to you it's nice to know yeah, yeah but they've been doing that from the beginning really because that very first gig you did at Little Devil <laughs> yeah, people were singing along that, that was weird that was, uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that so soon I think w- w- when we saw that happening we thought I think we're on to something here yeah so, uh, <laughs> And even back then you had people dressing up in armour or waving swords and hammers and things around. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah we, we never knew that whole aspect was going to take off. But no. so glad because it, it makes the shows a lot more fun. Yep. And obviously visually for this you know, album you've got you know, new armour for you know, Angus McFife. Yeah, Yeah. he, uh, yeah. In, the, in the album photo shoot he had this ridiculous Iron Man costume which unfortunately won't be making its appearance on stage because... Um, it's basically if you look at it, it falls apart. <laughs> it's the most fragile piece of Chinese crap. <laughs> uh, he he um, he tried wearing just the helmet the other night, right. and he couldn't see any of it. He, he walked on stage, bumped into an amplifier, bumped into our guitar player. It's like, oh no, let's not do this. So he's got a, a sort of a, a lightweight sort of, you know, more like the armor he used to wear, just some spiky fancy leather and shiny gold pants. Right, yeah. That's it. Still very impressive. Yeah, you've got to manage that sort of trade off between the looks and yeah. actually being practical to perform as well. Perform yeah. for like forty five days in a row, you know, there's a lot even our even our current costumes which are quite hard wearing are starting to smell and fall apart. <laughs> so uh, Yeah, I, mean, I feel sorry for whoever has to wash them at the end of the forty five days. <laughs> I think I'm gonna just stick mine in a bag and forget about it for the, <laughs> the next six months. Pretend nothing yeah. ever happened. And then I hope you don't get to do another tour before the next oh, album. Oh, I, I can see myself getting there, pulling it out, and it's just this, some organism has evolved and they're just eating it. You know. it's gonna be yeah. Fun. And then you said you're, you're off to Australia with Ailstorm. Yeah, that uh, starts uh, the 16th of November. So literally straight after the tour. Yeah, no break at all and a nice long flight. So you're really refreshed when you get there. Yeah. <laughs> first flight is to... First show is in... Um, Wellington, New Zealand, which is pretty much as far as you can fly. Yeah. <laughs> you fly any further and you're coming back the other way. <laughs> yeah, and how long is that for? Um, we've got two shows in New Zealand and... I'm trying to count here. One, two, four, five, 
Five in Australia. Three, four. Mm -hmm. God, I hope I can do it. <laughs> so bad at this. And then back in time for Christmas and a well-earned rest. Yeah. yeah. And then a couple of shows, and then it's on with that Ailstorm co-headline Sabaton tour. Yeah, no. So, yeah, so I keep myself busy. That's a, a tour I'm definitely looking forward to, yeah. Both really good live bands. It's going to be yeah. huge. Yeah. I mean, the show in London is going to be what, over 3,000 people. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing they'll be bringing their tank again. Yeah. They will have a tank. We are yeah. we're trying to plan something to rival the tank. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you need to get something that will just clips onto their tank and convert it into a, <laughs> clip it into a pirate ship. No, we've got, um, <laughs> we've got far more ridiculous ideas to <laughs> be review, revealed in, a, in due course. I look forward to those. Then. <laughs> I, I hope we can make it all work. <laughs> and I can imagine there will be a certain amount of alcohol consumed on that tour. <laughs> I mean, I'll try not to. Well, particularly towards the end of it. It's yeah. going to be very tempting, you know. And they'll, they'll be throwing all the booze we could ever drink at us. And, uh, <laughs> and that, that's a lot of booze. <laughs> the poor old liver needs to think about it. <laughs> and also, I suppose, yeah, with you having to sing, then it's a bit harder when you've had a heavy exactly. night. It's, yeah. it's not very conducive to a good performance, unfortunately. <laughs> no. But yeah. you've got to strike a balance, you know, because if you have a couple of drinks, the show's, you know, if you, if you try and do Ailstorm sober, it just there's something wrong, you know. It just looks wrong. You know, but after you have two or three drinks, then you know everyone loosens up and you know, strike a balance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's definitely going to be a tour to look forward to. Yes, yeah. I cannot wait for that one. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much for your time. Yeah. Excellent.